That's all. No. Yeah. That's all. Good afternoon. Welcome to the June 10th edition of the Metropolitan Traffic and Parking Commission meeting. If you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal this decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. I move for approval of today's agenda. Is there a first? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Agenda's been approved. The minutes of the May 13th meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. We have a first. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The approval of the consent agenda. Please note that items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. It, is there anyone seeking to remove an item from the consent agenda? Okay. Okay. We will uh, read the consent agenda and move to, for approval. Uh, mandatory referrals, uh, 2019M016AB001, a request for the abandonment of the public right away from Industry Street southward along an unnumbered alley and alley number 2086 easement rights to be retained requested by Richard Perkinson applicant. Item B, a request for the abandonment of right of way and easements along alley number 384 from 20th Avenue South to Lau Avenue between Broadway and alley number 386 and along alley 386 northward approximately 123.5 feet. Also shown in sketch the proposed right of way dedication to extend alley 386 to 20th Avenue North, so the proposed right-of-way abandonment does not result in a dead-end alley. Easement rights to be retained until an NES agreeable solution is reached to backfeed parcel 147 with electrical service requested by SM&E Inc. applicant. Parking regulations. Item C, a request to remove the valet zone at 401 Church Street requested by Premier Parking. Item D, request to remove the loading zone on the south side of Porter between 11th and 12th, requested by the Tennessean. Item E, request to remove the loading zone at 404th 4th Avenue South, requested by the Bell Tower. Item F, request to remove the valet zone at 3201 West End Avenue, requested by the Ten Angel. Item G, request to remove the loading zone at 1 Music Circle East, requested by GCFA Inc. Item H, modify the speed limit on Lombardi from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour requested by council member Pulley. Item I, authorize all way stop at O'Brien Avenue and Leviet Street requested by council member Roberts. Item J, an authorized always stop at Danby Drive and Lynn Drive requested by a resident. Item K, authorize the stop sign at Chitwood Court at Dawnwood Drive and Tanya Court and Aaronwood Drive requested by resident. Item L, authorize truck restrictions on Bellwood Street with late weight limit of five tons requested by a resident. Item N, Authorized an all-way stop at Jones Avenue and Delway Drive, requested by Metro Public Works. Item N, authorize a three-way stop at Stone Creek Drive and Stone Run, requested by Council Member Swope. Item O, reduce the speed limits on 25th Avenue South from West End to Blakemore from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. On Natchez Trace from West End to Blakemore, from 30 to 25 miles per hour. Vanderbilt Place from 31st Avenue South to Natchez Trace from 30 miles per hour to 25. 
Jess Dealey from Natchez Trace to 25th Avenue South from 30 to 20 miles per hour. Highland Avenue from 25th Avenue South to 24th Avenue South from 30 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour. 24th Avenue South from Blakemore to Garland from 30 to 20 miles per hour requested by Vanderbilt University. Item P, authorize all way stop control at South 12th Street and Sevier Street requested by Council Member Withers. Item Q, authorize all way stop control at South 12th Street and Lenore Street requested by Council Member Withers. The consent agenda has been approved. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion for approval. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The consent agenda has been approved. Congratulations to those who came. <laughs> okay, I think the next item on the agenda is a parklet program update from the Metropolitan Planning Department. You just please state your name for the record and welcome. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Ellen Gonzalez with the Metro Planning Department. This is just going to be a brief update as to where we are in the process. Uh, as you remember, we were here before to discuss the pilot, I believe it's this past February, January. But uh, we, we went through the process. We accepted a few applications, and I'm going to give you a brief update. Uh, next slide. So overall, this will be a brief update as to where we are in the process, an overview of projects that were submitted to Metro this year for this year's intake window, and next steps will be taken over the next coming months. As you know, we had a one, one, one intake window period uh, to allow uh, parklets to sponsors to submit projects for potential consideration. Um, the mayor, uh, as a reminder, this, this pilot program is intended to provide interest, interested businesses, neighborhood, and community groups the opportunity to temporarily extend the functions of sidewalk space and to emulate activities that would be found within walkable areas, such as cafe seating, uh, public art installations, maybe bike corrals, it's meant to be as flexible as possible to encourage folks to think of how they use their, their space. And it's meant to encourage uh, areas that don't have as much walkability or space to provide cafe seating in front of the businesses. Uh, this is an example of a parklet that is in Montreal. As you can see, a lot of these businesses and uh, neighborhood associations will take large amounts of investment to provide these types of facilities to encourage public use of space especially in areas that don't really have park spaces or, or are constrained with the amount of, uh, amount of activity that's happening on the street. As you know, there's a lot of activity happening along the sidewalk space, so space is being, um, space is very, very competitive these days. So we're looking at all ways to encourage folks to uh, be part of the process to uh, view their streets beyond just as areas to park their car. Next, next slide. So as you know, this, this, this is our one-year pilot. Um, Mayor Briley announced the pilot on last parking day, last September 21st, and an, a call for applications was, was made. We created an intake window, which was open until February 8th of this past year, allowing Metro planning staff, as well as other departments, to vet proposed parklet projects. And uh, projects that met our screening requirement, requirements that we set out um, were based on their location, based on the public support, and design guidelines the way that we were then reviewed by a committee that we, we established. Next slide. <clears throat> so as, as you can see, this has been a year long process up to now. This, the orange bar is where we are today, basically the final step. Um, we opened the window until February 8th. Uh, we reviewed their locations and met, met their, how eligible they are based on their locations. And uh, we, 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 we then forward from our internal review to the parklet review committee. And then we met on March 18th amongst our stakeholders to determine which ones can move forward to go on to public works as permitting. Next slide. Uh, projects that were submitted to planning were based on these locational requirements. Ba basically, public, the, the right of way needs to be owned by Metro, obviously. We, we, we're not concerning any routes, or any straight routes, uh, with speed limits of 30 miles per hour or less. And you know, making sure that these types of projects don't impact our, avail our ability to create future bike lanes or uh, have future uh, transit stops or what have you, make sure that they don't have any impacts with drainage or utilities, fire hydrants or what have you. 
and they're limited to specific areas that are just mixed use for now uh, in areas that are more urban from T4 to T6. And this next slide shows you the map where these projects would be eligible in. Basically, in T4 urban areas such as 12 South, uh, the nations, all the way up to downtown. And once folks made it through the screening pro process, they went through before the committee, which met March 18th, uh, made up with representatives from various metro departments as well as, as, well as community stakeholders. Uh, we're, we're, happy, we're, we're happy that Pastor Neil was able to make, make it. He, he was able to weigh in on how things that may be, may be common through the commission's eyes, things to address. And we, we made sure to um, vet each project that we received uh, with extreme care. And we, we made recommendations and requested additional information from the applicants up to this point. So we received three applications. As you can see, two of them were proposed downtown. One was proposed in front of Mike's Ice Cream on 12th and 2nd Avenue. One was proposed on 5th Avenue in front of Frothy Monkey. And a third was proposed in 12th South in front of Jenny's Ice Cream. And out of the three, we selected one to move forward, to move forward with the permitting that's required. Can you tell us which one? Oh, sure. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, the one on Second Avenue was the one that we selected to move forward. Uh, it's close to the intersection with Commerce. It's on the the west side of Second Avenue, in front of Mike's Ice Cream. And I'm not going to dive too deep into this, since uh, the applicant will have to come back next month, since it's currently a metered space. So they will be requesting to have the, the meter bagged for up to a year. But basically, <clears throat> it's sponsored by NCDC as well as Mars Pet Care. And they're making an, um, an attempt to encourage more people to activate this space and to attract more people who are walking and perusing through the site, not only just tourists, but also Nashvilleans on their way to work or what have you. Um, they received a large amount of community support from neighboring businesses and from community stakeholders, as well as uh, in, uh, design firms. And it's proposed to take up one metered space in front of this tree. Yeah. As you can see, it's on the west side of the, of the of the street. It was initially proposed to have a pergola, but they backed down from that idea since it's pretty shaded with the shade trees that are there. And, and here's some streetscape photos as to what that current looks like. It's where that white car is on the left side next to the tree, and they were able to have that in an existing um, parking stall over 15 feet beyond the, the fire hydrant that's there. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, that this proposed park will be reviewed in greater detail in the next month's meeting. This is just an overview of the prod, the, the prod program up to date. And uh, you, you guys will be able to weigh in on the potential bagging of the parking meter. Over the course of the next few months, uh, staff, planning, public works, and what have you will be monitoring installation, the activity, and maintenance of the parklet as they've provided a maintenance um, checklist that they, they will be reviewing every day. Uh, the applicant will be reviewing that every day. And we'll also be gathering feedback from neighboring businesses and stakeholders to make sure that it's meeting the, the guidelines of the program and then it's not, um, it's supporting the business activity that's there. And we also take steps to see if any updates are needed for our existing permitting to see if, if it needs to be revamped or, or we could follow the lead of other cities which have created a brand new permitting structure. That's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll take anything. Um, have you all thought about how scooters are gonna impact this? <laughs> are people gonna leave them uh, if they're there overnight or how that's gonna affect the area? Yeah, a, a big reason why this program was <clears throat> was encouraged was to encourage more street activity to happen off the sidewalks. So as you know, scooters, uh, other other things that are left in the public right of way prevent people from walking or folks with ADA issues. So this would potentially provide a space for scooters to be parked at. They're, they're originally, so we were planning to have two spaces instead of just one, with one space with, as, a, as a bike corral, but they've since withdrawn that idea since now we've been moving forward with the scooter corrals. But in the future, we could by all means encourage more folks to have dedicated parking space for uh, not only scooters, but also dockless bikes and what have you. 
Any other questions, comments? Yes. I, I'm a big supporter of this. I think that the parklets really add to the ambiance downtown in particular. Um, I, I do know you were asking about the scooters and there is uh, a designated space for scooters. It's at the intersection of Commerce and Second Avenue that they've put on that same side of the street. And that seems to have helped some of the meter, I mean the um, scooter mess that's going on down there a little bit. Any other questions? Did, what kind of interest did you have? I know she only had three applications, but um, I'm just trying to get a sense of what kind of interest overall there was or were there particular challenges for folks to submit an application? Is there something you've learned from the process that could be improved going forward? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, beyond just the three that we had, we had numerous folks approach us to have parklets. Um, some folks, including Frothy Monkey, who have unfortunately uh, backed out, they were under the impression that they would be allowed to provide table service or alcohol sales, which doesn't really meet the program goals. And as a learning experience, that's something that some cities have begun doing, not just for open space seating to treat as mini parks, but also to allow uh, table service to occur. We currently have that in some areas on the sidewalk space, and we're currently talking about the idea of extending those rights to the street, but that's gonna require much more leverage. All right, well, thank you for coming today. So next month, we'll have an application to review. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, thank you. Thanks, y'all. All right. Mr. Knopf, did you have anything to add? Well, Diane, did you have anything? Yes, I do. Need to revise the commissioners that the July and August meetings will be held at the health department. Okay. <laughs> unless we change it, so, or unless somebody changes it, it wouldn't be us. Um, so next on the agenda, yes. Or can I go ahead? Yes. Um, Mr. Hammond has written a memo, and, I, and you have copies in front of you a memo on guidance regarding regulatory traffic changes. And I just kind of stick that in your pocket, take it home, kind of review it sometime. It, it's definitely not questions I want you to ask every meeting. I don't want to turn these into two hour meetings or anything, but it's something that, that he put some thought into and, and John has had a copy and I've had a copy and, and we've put some thought into these questions. I'm, there's probably a million more you could ask, but these are some pretty good guidelines on what to look for when we're doing our presentation and when the council people or the residents come in and, and give their testimony. Um, yeah, it's kind of technical mumbo jumbo, but we just wanted you to have this in your head and something to, to, to look for. Like when I throw these numbers up there, I mean 90, 10 splits, okay, what does that mean? Well, maybe this will help with some of the questions you might have, that's all. Well, thank you. and. Uh, Mr. Hammond, thank you for this uh, thoughtful note that you, uh, memo that you put together. I think it'll be helpful to us. And maybe at some point in time, we can get some kind of update on some of the traffic calming programs that are going on in the city, because they impact, I think, some of the decisions that we make um, on other, th you know, stop signs, speed limits, et cetera. So maybe at some cool. point. We'll talk about it probably a little July update. Yeah, tonight. July or August would be maybe a good time. Okay. Anybody else have a question, concern, observation for the good of the group? I've got one more, Mr. Chair. What's that? I'd like to thank the mayor and his staff for reappointing you and Mr. Brown to the commission. Five more short years. <laughs> And, and nobody even opposed us, so it's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, with that said, I will move to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.